Hey tubers, it's Ben the Curious Consumer, and today we're going to be taking a look at a product that is for both the Nintendo or Super Nintendo Classic consoles. It is the season, tis the season, for the Classic consoles. A few years ago, the Nintendo Classic console came out right around the holiday season and surprised everyone with 30 games for 60 bucks, a couple of controllers, games like Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, Metroid, Zelda, Kirby's Adventure, those are just to name a few. 30 games for 60 bucks. It was a great value. The problem with this console was it was in short supply. People couldn't get their hands on it. You could search everywhere this console, you just couldn't find it. You had to use uh, websites like BrickSeek and things like that to find these consoles. And if you did find one, they were a gem. You had to hold on to those. Unfortunately, the market became saturated with people trying to make a ton more money by selling them after they bought them. Next up was the Super Nintendo. The very next year, the Super Nintendo Classic came out. This one here was 20 games for 80 bucks, and this particular console came with games like Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country, F-Zero, Mario Kart, Zelda, and of course, a previously unreleased game, Star Fox 2. This console here was great. Both of these consoles represent the Nintendo very well in the past and now. The Super Nintendo Classic, however, was one of those consoles that wasn't as hard to find, but Nintendo definitely did not keep these in short supply. They continued to sell these throughout the course of the year, learning from their previous mistake of not having enough of these to go around. Taking a look at both these consoles, they were great consoles. They had HDMI ports on the back so you could put them onto those big screen TVs and have a really fun time. Unfortunately, Nintendo did not think about the consumer in this case. I think they went a little too retro. I think they started thinking about that nostalgic feel of having a wired controller. And unfortunately, the wired controllers on the Nintendo Classic were only three feet long. The wired controllers on the Super Nintendo Classic, I believe, were only six feet long. Taking into consideration that we live in a world now where you don't even have to get up to press power on your consoles. Controllers are now wireless, and it is the regular everyday console that comes with wireless controllers. So to see that these two consoles came out during a time when wireless was the thing? really surprised a lot of people. Now, of course, you want to have your controller ports there, but why not sell a wireless option? And unfortunately, Nintendo didn't do that. Instead, they licensed out the ability for other companies to do so. So you have controllers like this, the MyCade controller, which is a great wireless controller for the money at the time. Unfortunately, you had to live with this big chunky clunky dongle that stuck out on the outside of your controller as well as on the Super Nintendo Classic you had to pull out this little tab here to have your wireless controllers to be plugged in here if let's say you use the same one you plug it in like that and have this big clunky chunky box sticking out of the front of your console well that left me searching searching for a while far and wide to find certain things that would actually alleviate the stresses of having a long cable or an extension cable coming off of my console that's 10 feet long while my son or daughter were running around the living room they could trip on the cable pull this out or just having an ugly cable i wanted something wireless so i searched around the internet came across this. It's a Brooks accessory called the Nincade. The Nincade is a do-it-yourself wireless controller mod that is pretty simple to install. It actually allows you to use any of your Bluetooth controllers. If you have an 8-bit DOE controller lying around like this one, this is the SNES 30 controller that you could use the SF30 controller. 8-bit DOE also makes Nintendo version controllers that look very similar to the to the MyCade controller, but made with Bluetooth technology. You could also use other controllers like your PlayStation 4 controllers if you wanted to. You could use that. Today we're going to install the Nincade Bluetooth do-it-yourself kit into the NES Classic and possibly the Super NES Classic so we could use it with our 8-bit DOE controllers. This should alleviate a lot of the issues that I've been having. I should be able to sit far away and enjoy my gaming from across the room. So let's see what's inside the Nincade box. We'll take a look around the box here. It says Nincade, it's by Brooks. Um, and on the back, it shows you that it's a do-it-yourself kit. So inside this box, you should have a Nin Nincade board. Um, and I believe there's gonna be a wire in there as well to be able to connect the board to the motherboard inside here. It works with the uh, Famicom Classic, the Super Famicom Classic, the NES Classic, and of course, 
the Super NES Classic. As well, you could use Wiimote controllers, you could use PlayStation 4 wireless controllers, and Switch Pro controllers. So it looks like you could use this device with a lot of different controllers. Now, if you take a look around the box, it's got some pretty cool artwork, 8-bit uh, kind of feel to it. And if we take the sleeve off here, inside here, you've got this little packet here on the top, which looks like it has... Oh, yep, yeah, it has the wire that we're going to use to install into the console, as well as it looks like a screwdriver. So that's pretty neat. They're giving you the screwdriver to be able to do this. You don't have to supply your own. Is it a... Oh, it looks like it's a the right screwdriver, just a regular Phillips head. And, of course, you've got your board here in, inside, so in a static bag. It does come with a piece of 3M tape, some Brooks stickers, which are actually pretty pretty good quality um, and an instruction manual so the instruction manual here is going to show you how to put this into your console let's just take a look here nine looks like nine simple steps of doing that and just a quick disclaimer that doing this mod would void any warranties you may have on your console so just keep that in mind you want to be very careful taking these things apart um, I'm taking mine apart I bought this with my own money I'm taking it apart so if I break it uh, just don't do what I did. All right. Sounds good. Let's get started. We'll do the NES Classic to begin. Let's just get my camera set up so we can get a good look at what we are working with here. So taking a look at the NES Classic here, we want to keep that right upside down. We know we're going to have to take apart this console. So we have to take the four pads off the bottom of the console. Let me just put these things aside. Once we do that, we want to make sure we're not losing those because we are going to be putting those back on as soon as we're done. Um, so let's get started here. I'm going to do is just pop this in. We got our four foot pads off and we're going to take the screwdriver and we're going to start taking the screws out. All right. So now that we've got those four screws down, we'll take a look at the directions here. It tells me to get those four screws down. So let's... Uh, nice and easy take the top off just be gentle in case there's any ribbon cables it doesn't look like there's any ribbon cables in there here is the inside of your nintendo classic edition here so you've got this heat shield uh, and if you look at the construction of this console you'll see right here and right here are the controller ports so this this one is for controller port one this one's for controller port two i am only going to do controller port one because i only want to have access to one of these wireless controllers. If you wanted to install two of the Nincade controllers here, you'd have to get two of these Nincade kits in order for that to happen. Um, I will leave links in the description below for all of the stuff that we're using today as far as the, um, the Nincade things. All right, so we take a look at these controller port one. Like I said before, what we're gonna do is just take that little, be very careful. You don't wanna bend anything or break anything. You just wanna wiggle it back and forth. And what we're really doing is just taking apart the, um, just unplugging the controller from its port here. And that's controller number one, right there. You're going to install this wire in where that controller was plugged in. All right, so now that we've gotten everything taken off, I just wanted to take a quick look at the console. I was trying to find out which one of these plugs is no controller port number one and controller port number two. It's important to know that. Because I want to plug this into controller port number one, I wanted to make sure that I unplug the right one. So I'm only doing one of these. If I was doing both, then I would think about the other, the other one. So what I'm going to do here while I'm doing this, I wanted to just cut my 3M tape down a little bit, and I'm going to be installing my extra cables as well as the Brooks board. So if you take a look at the Brooks board, really simply here, you've got two of these connector ports. So you've got two connector ports right here, connector port one, connector port two. So when you're plugging this into your Nintendo Classic, the plug here, and I know what you're thinking, this is going in place. I just unplugged the controller port, I know what you're thinking. I'm not gonna be able to use the wired controller. That is not the case. This is also a pass-through device. So right here is gonna be your connection to the wired controller, so this is gonna plug in on the right side. And then this cable is going to connect the board to the motherboard or the main board. 
And that way there's a con constant pass through. So you choose whether you want to use a wired connection or a wireless connection. But you want to make sure you put this board in the right place and you want to kind of want to line it up where you think it can fit before you put this 3M tape on because this 3M tape makes it really tough to move this board around after you set it down. So what we're going to do, we're going to just see if we can line this up right here. You're going to have to, the way this is lined up, when you unplug it, you're going to have to turn the plug around so it fits onto your board. So let's just plug this in, we'll get it in place, make sure it goes all the way in there, see how far we can stretch this thing. Uh, we could stretch it right about there, move that cable over if we had to for this cable. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. That's where we're going to put it. So right now I'm just going to put this on to my board. That way it has a nice adhesive stick. Now you wanted, I, I wanted to size this up too just beforehand, so I did size it up a little bit to make sure that this board fit with the cover on. There's enough clearance here for me to put the board in here. Now, why am I putting it all the way over to the left-hand side? Is because eventually, maybe later on, I want to do this again with a secondary board here so I can plug in the second controller. That's the only reason why I'm pushing it all the way over here. I can move this cable over to the side. Now I'm going to connect this into here and I'm going to connect the board to the main board. So what I'm doing is just putting in that plug, making sure it makes the, the connection by pushing it all the way down. There we go, that's in place. And I'm going to now plug this in here. Now cable management can be probably a little better in good just make sure that one's all the way down cable management could be better I guess but you know in this case for what I'm doing it for I am just gonna tuck this in like that and look there we go almost done almost done just get rid of these now all I'm gonna do put the cover back onto the Nintendo classic screw it back in but before I screw it back in we are going to test this console out so I'm just gonna put the top back on Make sure it fits in place, which it does. It feels pretty good. And let's get this plugged in and see if we can synchronize a controller to it. All right, so here we go. I couldn't find my original Nintendo Classic controller, so I have to use my Super Nintendo Classic controller. So I've got that plugged in um, right here. And as you can see, it's a wired controller, and I can still, you know, scroll through the menus, do everything I need to do here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to synchronize this controller to the console. So now we are ready to try the synchronized process. All right. So now that I've got this in synchronized mode, you can see here that the little light is flashing there. On this controller here, what I'm going to do is a little code. Very simple. You probably remember this from the classic Nintendo games. That is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. And you can hear that the console is now starting to beep. While it's beeping, that's coming out of this. While that's beeping, this controller is trying to synchronize to that console. We'll see if it synchronizes. We'll give it just a few seconds. And hopefully, hopefully it synchronizes. Once the synchronized process is complete, we won't need to have... Oh, synchronized process looks like it is complete. Once that's done, we will not need to have this controller, this wired controller, tethered anymore. We will be able to use this controller. So, as you can see, looks like that it's working. Let's just, um, let's see if it works. We'll start it up. I'm going to unplug unplug the other controller so you can see there is no controller plugged in here and I am just going to play the game Boink. all right oh yeah buddy and let's see what happens when I reset the console does this co does this still stay synchronized and it does all right now I'm gonna power down the console turn the console back on and see if it stays synchronized all right, so now that we've turned the console off, we're gonna to try to turn that console back on. When we press the power button here, like this, you'll see the little light come on here. 
Now this controller has not desynchronized from the console yet, but what you're gonna see is that light is gonna turn off, turned right off. The controller is now in sleep mode, so I can put it into storage. If I press anything like this, you notice that nothing is working. But in order to turn the controller on, I have to press some of the buttons on the screen. As Soon as I do that, that light turns back on, it goes solid. Once it goes solid, now I can use my controller again. Awesome. Well, guys, that is it. That is the Nincade do-it-yourself wireless kit that allows you to put Bluetooth technology in any of your Nintendo classics. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that bell down below so it notifies you guys every single time I make a new video. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget, stay curious, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.